Welcome to Chemistry. My name is Miss Rainey and I am so excited that you are joining me on AP Chemistry this year. This is our very first video in our very first unit, Chemical Foundations Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about matter, properties, changes, and methods of separation. Are you ready to get started? So the next thing we're going to look about is methods of separation. How could you separate physical compounds like mixtures, homogeneous mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures? So we have a couple of lab ideas here. The first one is filtration, pouring a solution through a medium in which only the solvent can pass through. So this would be like pouring coffee grounds through a coffee filter. And so you have a coffee filter and you put some coffee grounds in it and then you pour some water through it, water, 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 and only the water comes out the bottom. So this is filtration. A solid mixture can be separated by adding a solvent in which only one of the components of the mixture will dissolve, and then pouring the resultant through a filter paper. So only the water will go through, the coffee grounds won't. So then we have distillation. Distillation is a method of separation, method of separating mixtures based on differences in their boiling point. So this would be boiling a liquid. Let's see, heat, let's put some water in there and get it to boil. But let's just say that there was some other liquid in there. Well, let's go with oil. And oil has a higher boiling point than water. So when you heat it up, let's go with a little bit of fire and you're heating it up with fire, the water will boil away, but the oil will stay behind. So that's distillation. Substances with weaker intermolecular forces will have lower boiling points and therefore will be collected first. Another method of separation is chromatography. Chromatography is a, where a solution is dissolved in a fluid that will carry it through a stationary phase at different rates. A lot of times when we're thinking about chromatography, we'll think about paper chromatography. Although in this class we'll use that and we'll also use column. And there's actually many, many different types of chromatography that exist out there. Gas chromatography, thin layer chromatography, many, many different types. Different types. But the idea is you have a solvent. So I've got some water. And you have a stationary phase, a piece of, let's go with filter paper. And so the water, you know, is going to be drawn up the filter paper and the filter paper is going to get wet. Well, let's just say you had something on that filter paper. That will also be drawn up the paper and it will separate, the thing that we have here in red will separate as it gets drawn up the paper based on its difference in polarities. And then the last one we have is decantation, separating a mixture by removing a layer of liquid. So generally the top layer of liquid is poured off a bottom liquid layer or a settled precipitate. So if you have, again, that beaker that had the oil at the bottom and it had the water at the top, you could simply just pour the water off the top. And it's called decanting the water off the top of the oil. So here's a couple of pictures. Identify the methods of separation. Take a minute, think about it. What do you think these pictures are representing? So the first picture we have here is chromatography. And this one is paper chromatography. We have a couple of arrows here pointing to what's going on. At the bottom, we have the mobile phase, what we usually call the solvent. So maybe water or alcohol or something that's going to move that around. Let's put that mobile phase right there. Then we have the stationary phase over here. In this case, it's a paper. And so that stationary phase is kind of holding on to it. And then you have, maybe this was a, let's say a black ink dot right there. And as the water traveled up the filter paper, it took that black ink with it and it separated it into red and purple and blue and yellow. So then you had a different color ink. Maybe you had um, blue ink right here 
but that blue really wasn't pure blue. Maybe it had some green and yellow, so it separated into blue and green and yellow. So the idea with chromatography is the differences in polarity. If the stationary phase, the paper, is polar, but the mobile phase, the solvent, is nonpolar, the parts of your mixture that are more nonpolar will stick with the mobile phase, which means they'll go up the paper, and the parts of the they'll go up with the water, and the parts that are polar will stick with the paper and not go up as high. Okay, the next one we have here, the next picture we have is decantation. We can see that this liquid is being decanted off of the solid. All it is is just pouring that liquid off and keeping the solid down at the bottom. A couple more we have here. So take a minute, think about them, make some guesses. Okay. This one is column chromatography. So this time, you've got the solvent at the top being poured in through where these arrows are. So the solvent's being poured in, and then more solvent, and more solvent, and more solvent. And as the solvent's being poured in, the solvent goes all the way through to the bottom. But notice that it's taking that mixture with it. So this used to be a mixture of all of these colors, and as it's separating, the yellow's going down faster which means the yellow is more attracted to the solvent, so it has the same polarity as the solvent. And since the blue is moving slower, it's more attracted to the stationary phase, which is whatever this column is full of. And so the blue has the same polarity as the stuff that's filling up the column. Okay, down here at the bottom, this is filtration. All we have is a beaker of some mixture, pouring it through a filter paper. Notice that the final mixture is a little bit clearer, lighter yellow, because whatever solid got stuck in the filter paper. And then the last one we have over here is distillation. So we have heat. A Bunsen burner is heating up some solution, and this has maybe two different liquids with two different boiling points. So one of the liquids with the lower boiling point is going to boil, and as it boils, it's, the gas is going to travel along. <coughs> and the gas is going to then condense. Here we have water, a cooling condenser that's going to condense the gas. And that gas is going to turn back into a liquid and then drip into the collection beaker. Okay, well, that's all I've got. That's different types of matter, physical and chemical changes and physical and chemical properties, and ways to separate mixtures. I hope you had fun and you learned something. We'll see you next time.